Do you wish that all things wealth and finance were much easier to understand and not presented by a bunch of beige cardigan-wearing geeks? Welcome to the Clever Investor Podcast, where we're dishing up the easiest-to-understand finance program served in bite-sized chunks, so your brain will thank you as your knowledge grows. Hosted by the brilliant Owen Taylor, a multiple award-winning expert with a glorious knack for explaining the complex world of wealth in the simplest of ways. Hey, Clever Investors, and welcome to another show. Well, over quite a few months, we've seen interest rates on mortgages increasing. But interestingly enough, over the last couple of weeks, we've actually seen several of the big lenders start lowering their serviceability assessment rates. And this is for certain borrowers under certain circumstances. And it's all under the heading of trying to help more customers refinance. Now, we talked in previous shows about the amount of fixed rate mortgages that we've got expiring this year. Pretty much around 800,000 mortgages that are going to come off these lovely, lovely low fixed rates that people jumped on quite rightly during the pandemic periods. Now, they're coming off these lower rates pretty much means for a lot of people that their repayments are going to double from what they've experienced on these low rates. Now, the mortgage rate in Australia has averaged about 6.87% since 1990 to currently, 2023. It reached an all-time high of just over 15.5% in September of 1990 and a record low of 2.14% in March of 2021. Now, historically, home loan rates in Australia have varied significantly over time due to multiple factors, including economic conditions, inflation, monetary policies, and market competition. The rates have experienced both highs and lows, influenced by fluctuations in the Reserve Bank of Australia's official cash rate, which also then has the impact and the knock-on effect onto our lending rates. So if interest rates are still well under what the 30-year average has been, the question is why are so many of my mortgage-broking friends telling me that it's been such a struggle for them to get the high majority of their clients to service the loans that they actually need and also want? Why are these industry experts struggling to get so many deals over the line? Well, the answer is the serviceability assessment rates lenders are required to use. A serviceability assessment rate also gets known as an assessment interest rate or a buffer rate. Now, this is a benchmark interest rate used by lenders to evaluate a borrower's ability to service a loan. It is typically higher than the actual interest rate on the loan and it acts as a safety measure to account for potential increases in interest rates or changes in the borrower's financial circumstances. Now, when the banks are assessing a borrower's loan application, they consider various factors such as your income, what expenses you've got, any existing debts that you have at the time of application, and very importantly, the applicant's financial stability. They use the serviceability assessment rate to determine whether the borrower can afford the loan repayments, not just on the current interest rate, but also if interest rates were to rise. By applying a higher interest rate through the serviceability assessment rate, lenders are then aiming to ensure that their borrowers can still comfortably meet these repayments, even in less favourable economic conditions. Now, this approach helps mitigate the risk of loan defaults, and that's really not what any lender wants. And it also, from a legal point of view, ensures their responsible lending practices. The serviceability assessment rate can vary among lenders and may depend on market conditions and 
the lender's appetite for risk. It's typically expressed as a percentage or a specific amount above the current interest rate. So as an example, if the current interest rates are, let's say, 6%, the lender may use a serviceability assessment rate of 9%. So they've added 3% onto it. And this is to stress test the borrower's repayment capacity. It's important to note that the serviceability assessment rate is not the actual interest rate that you, the borrower, is going to pay on the loan. It's a stress testing tool. It's a higher rate used during the loan approval process to evaluate your affordability and to mitigate risk really on everybody's behalf. Now, once the loan is approved, the borrower will typically pay the actual interest rate that's agreed upon in the loan contracts that you're going to sign. Now, it's time for a little word from today's podcast sponsor. Are you new to property investing and you're not sure if it's the right financial choice for you or don't know where to start? Well, our Wealth Through Property event is absolutely perfect for you. Upcoming dates for Wealth Through Property are the 30th of May in Sydney Olympic Park, the 14th of June in Sydney Sutherland Shire at the Sharks Karela, and the 29th of June live in Sydney CBD at the Hilton Hotel. All events start at 7pm and you can book yourself in by going to bluewealth.com.au. The Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, which is more commonly known by its acronym APRA. APRA is known as Australian's Prudential Regulator. But what does a prudential regulation mean? Putting it simply, prudential regulation is a legal framework that's focused on the financial safety and stability of institutions and the actual entire broader financial system. As Australia's prudential regulator, APRA, is responsible for ensuring that the entities it regulates can, under all reasonable circumstances, meet the financial commitments they make to a core group of customers. As such, APRA is sometimes described as Australia's financial safety regulator. In October 2022, APRA announced that it was going to increase the interest rate buffers that it advises banks to use to assess the serviceability of home loans and investment loans. And they moved it from 2.5% to 3%. APRA increased the buffer rate to keep debt-to-income ratios from getting too high and minimise the risk to the country. Now, this was during our, let's say, pandemic period, and we had really, really low interest rates on mortgages So we're now faced with a situation where we've got the refinances and we've got people that are trying to borrow money to buy new property that are maybe new to the marketplace. But they're quite honestly being sort of penalised by having this 3% buffer before they can even get their mortgage through. Several of our larger lenders have begun tweaking their serviceability tests. Westpac, just to name one of them, has introduced a new streamlined refinance policy and it's been designed to help more customers refinance their existing Westpac home loans. Applications to refinance an existing mortgage will continue to be assessed under the standard serviceability rules and criteria and you're still going to need to provide all the regular verification documents, payslips, incomings and outgoings. But Westpac has come out and said that if certain customers are unable to meet this strict now serviceability standard, then different assessment criteria can be applied to their application. Now, this rate will be applied as a credit exception to new and existing mortgages. Currently, APRA expects banks to test new borrowers' ability to make their loan repayments at an interest rate that, as we said before, is 3% higher. This special circumstances 
refinancing policy means that you've got to meet certain criteria. Some of these things are that the new mortgage monthly repayments must be less or equal to the current minimum monthly contracted repayments on the loan being refinanced. Now, you've also got to have a good and clear credit score, so at greater than 650. They also want to make sure that the loans are principal and interest, so that's going to rule out quite a few people with investment loans, you can't have had any mortgage arrears or hardship reported within the last 12 months. The mortgage that's being refinanced has got to have been opened for more than 12 months. Things like credit cards and personal loans have got to have been kept in absolute tip-top condition, so no arrears, no missed payments on anything like this. If you're refinancing too, you can't add or increase the mortgage by more than 50000 higher than what the limit on the loan is being refinanced. At the moment, it seems that most of these policies, you can't have interest only. So as I mentioned before, if you've got an investment property loan, this is not going to be applicable for you unless you're switching it over to principal and interest. Hopefully, other lenders are going to start introducing policies such as this to make it easier for people that need to refinance. And then hopefully over time, we're going to see APRA, who is going to, across the board, decrease the serviceability assessment buffer. Just about all of the industry bodies are pressuring as much as they can APRA to reduce the serviceability assessment rate back down to a more reasonable level, probably around the 2% mark rather than its current 3%. This is going to help people from a serviceability point of view and what they can, what are they able to borrow from a bank's point of view. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. I want to ask you to please go and like us and recommend us to your friends. And if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to see on any other upcoming shows, then drop us a line here at the Clever Investor Podcast. I'll see you again next week for another edition of the Clever Investor Podcast. You have been listening to the Clever Investor Podcast, proudly sponsored this week by Blue Wealth Property. Are you ready to start a new investment journey? Get in touch with the industry leaders. Blue Wealth Property. Blue Wealth have a proven track record in using research to identify growth markets. And Blue Wealth have supported thousands of Australians to buy the right property in the right market at the right time. Go to bluewealth.com.au